Carl here from Games, Brains and a Headbanging Life, GBHBL.com for short. It's my pleasure to be chatting with Martin, vocalist of the simply legendary death metal band Asphyx, ahead sure. of the brand new release Necrocerosis, out on January 22nd, 2021, very close to it now, via Century Media Records. Martin, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. How... I guess we'll get started with, has your 2021 been so far? Better than 2020? Um, well, it's hard, that's hard to compare. I guess. <laughs> it's just been, what, like, not even two weeks? No, it's been quite okay. You know, it's been quite okay. I mean, I'm doing uh, straight after the, you know, after New Year, I continued with, you know, the stuff that I'm, like, doing with, with you, like all the PR work. Mm. And, uh, yeah, with the band, we focus on... Um, uh, like in yeah, you know, um, one half week's time, we do like uh, a special, um, as we call it, a release stream. So mm. uh, yeah, really busy to learn all the songs and the lyrics out of my head. So yeah, busy. So it's a uh, it's a bit of a logic a continuation of uh, of the last year, really. Yeah, wow. yeah. And I mean, yeah, there's still there's still there's still uh, you know the pandemic going on, but yeah, as, also as a band, you know, you just have to. Uh, yeah, deal the best way you can with it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And on a personal level, how have you been coping in this new world over the last 10 months? Um, well, basically, just continuing as, 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 uh, you know, as, as, as usual. The only yeah, big difference is, is that we had absolutely no live shows, apart mm. from a few really special kind of corona shows in Germany where... Uh, yeah, people had to sit or uh, you know stand in smaller groups and wearing their, uh, their protection, and uh, so that was that was quite special. Mm. But apart from that, yeah, no shows at all, and uh, yeah, that was the worst thing. But because of that, we were able to put everything, of course, in uh, in, in in all that had to deal with the album. So um, as a band, yeah, we were we were we were it kept us really busy. Uh, so okay. we used it just we used the time just to our best advantage. Yeah, that's brilliant. And I mean, as a band, was it easy for you to kind of to adapt to these changes? You talk about the socially distanced shows. That must have been incredibly strange for you. Yeah, it was. And and at first we were really like, uh, you know, had our skepsis. But, uh, in uh, you know, we go like, okay, so this is a new... This is a new exper experience and, and also kind of a challenge. And mm. uh, afterwards... Um, yeah, it was really nice actually to do, and especially uh, the gratitude of the people that were there because all the shows were sold out in no time, really. And they just told us when we were talking to the people, like how 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 grateful they were to you know to finally be able to see a show again and to you know to witness like a band back on stage, even though they had to sit. But uh, it was not a big difference from the usual. I mean, usually they stand up and then they rage, you know, and then. Mm. Uh, throwing fists, banging the hat, screaming, but now they were just doing that sitting on a, on a chair. So <laughs> that, was, that was basically the, the only difference. And uh, yeah, for us, it was really like a, a really positive experience. I said especially because uh, yeah, people, the, the gratitude of them was um, was amazing. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad it was positive then. Hmm? So of course we're a matter of weeks away from the release of the new album, mostly recorded in lockdown, correct? Absolutely yes. Well, yeah, in in um, the first lockdown in the Netherlands, yeah, mm. when we, um, uh, yeah, when the pandemic came in uh, and and all the shows got cancelled, and we said, okay, you know, we might as well, uh, you know, see if we are able to go into the studio because actually we were with too many people, you know, four in the band and then the sound engineer, so we had mm. to had uh, ask him for permission to go. He says, well, you know, I trust you guys. I, that you, you know, will not be infected, and we were not, fortunately for everybody. Mm. So yeah, we did. Um, we went. We went to the studio for a couple of jams, two weekends, and finished uh, the arrangement, the, the last arrangements of the song. Yeah. So it was a matter of taking advantage of the downtime that kind of prompted this release. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say it that way. Yeah. Okay. And, and and of course afterwards. Uh, yeah, the lads had more time, you know, to, to you know, to do the guitars uh, at home, you know, on the, on the drum tracks that we recorded. And me, myself, that was actually quite pleasant, uh, even when it may sound silly. But so when all the songs were, were arranged and you had like the final uh, compositions ready, then I could start writing the lyrics. And the cool thing was that 
because it was really like a first lockdown in the Netherlands and you know it it was like really kind of apocalyptic because there was hardly any cars driving and all that mm. so I was I was like well actually for myself to write lyrics with this is just a, almost like a perfect scenario because no one was of course was bothering me you know <laughs> so yeah. I was completely in solitude and uh, could finish my job Okay, so you've taken advantage and found positives in what is a predominantly negative situation. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah, yeah, truly. Yeah, yeah but so I mean, that's, you... that's, that's, that's life anyway, you know. I mean, uh, in, in all, you just try to make the best out of things, even in the, in, in the worst possible situations, mm. you know, I think. Well, easy for me to say. I mean, I'm not uh, right now in some civil war, you know, like, like poor people in Syria or whatever, you know. But, uh, well, yeah, that's, that's a little bit of my life's philosophy. No, fair enough. So, would you say that this pandemic lockdown era of life has been the main inspiration behind this release? Um, no, not the main inspiration, but of course mm. it had the, uh, it had like a kind of an effect on it. You yeah, know? I mean, it, it was kind of weird to go into the studio and uh, even for us, you know, fellas. I mean, you usually. Because, you know, the band is like a kind of a brotherhood. And, and if we meet each other, then it's always like big huggings and, you know, <laughs> things like that, like 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 beers. But uh, this time we were like, uh, ah, no, you know, because, uh, yeah, well, you never know. You know, I mean, the guys, some of the guys have like families. Yeah. You know, when they get infected. So that was a bit of a weird one. And also to be in the studio and kept like a polite little distance, you know, like when talking and stuff like that. Because, yeah, in the end, yeah, if, if everybody would would... would Street, you know, would keep to the to, to the regulations, then I don't think we would have that many infections. But mm. uh, you know, even yeah. as a even as a rebellious kind of band that we are, yeah, we were like, okay, let's be uh, let's be considerative and and um, yeah, deal with it. You know, so that was a kind of a a weird kind of effect. And uh, yeah, of course, I had to write a song about it, but mm. that landed that turned out to be like a bonus track because the album was too long. To put all the songs on on um, the vinyl editions that we were thinking of, so ah, so it's a bonus track, of course. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything then that you were forced to do this time round that you found you enjoyed more and might consider doing again, even when things get better? Like it was good for your mental health or good for the band? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I just mentioned eh, the way mm. that I was writing my songs, the <laughs> lyrics of them. But yeah, that's, of course, like a situation I cannot, uh, yeah, I cannot get back, you know, because, uh, yeah, that is depending on, on, on what authorities decide and not me, mm. you know. But yeah, that was for me like a really, um, a really positive thing. But yeah, well, that's, that's not realistic, really. I mean, yeah, let's just put it just this way. I mean, um, I thought it was kind of uh for one thing i was it was kind of funny with one of the so-called the covid shows that um yeah everybody was able to sit you know sometimes you have people uh at concerts and they go like, oh shit now i'm tired you know or, <laughs> you know i had a, i had a couple of beers too many and then you know everybody's then looking for a place to sit and they can't find any because usually in venues there are no chairs you know <laughs> so <laughs> yeah maybe that yeah when it comes to your lyric writing then is it a matter of you using that as a way to vent your feelings kind of where you bottle it up and now it's time to release it uh no not that much not that much i mean uh, uh yeah maybe a little bit with uh with one song like nameless elite you know mm. because of all the because of all the um um yeah you know the terrorist actions that took place all over europe especially in france of course, of course. but yeah germany germany had to deal with that and uh uh yeah even here in the netherlands we had a small you know which is quite a long time ago but yeah then now you have this uh special units of um i think any country every country in the world will have them you know the the british are famous for that for the SES. Mm. uh the americans followed afterwards with the seals and and with delta israelis of course have them so i thought to myself you know what um may, maybe write a song about these elite units that nowadays uh you know are also considered as anti-terror units and they try to um uh yeah to, to, to make sure that we are not under attack or, or you know dealing with some terrorist attack that can happen to all of us in god knows what kind of um uh you know setting like may that be at a supermarket or may, may that be at a, at a concert or may that be at a 
uh, you know, at a newspaper's office mm. or whatever, you know. So I thought, okay, so that's a bit, um, it's not like a personal kind of feeling, but it is something that um, I had never been aware of that there was people actually training every day to, to, to be in shape, to, um, yeah, to, to protect like everybody from, uh, from, from, you know, situations that, as, as I just mentioned. Okay. And would you say this album, it's a good barometer of exactly where aspects are at right now, both musically and as a unit mentally? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I've got nothing to add really to that. You know, you just, people just, <laughs> just listen for themselves. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what really what we stand for in, in, in all kinds of, uh, ways when it comes to, especially like the music, uh, of Paul, like, the, cause he provides all the riffings. Um, mm. I think, yeah, it's, it has a wide variety in the songs themselves. Uh, Tempo-wise, some are really slow and doomy. Others are more up-tempo. There's a bit of, you know, here and there, like fast paces in there. Uh, Lyric-wise, cover quite a wide range of, uh, of topics from, you know, the usual fun death gore aspect in, in <laughs> Bulldog's Implosion to something very tragic as, as the, the great famine in China and the Mao, you know. So, mm. uh, and um, because we... Yeah, for the first time in years, you know, we have like a steady lineup on mm. the same lineup on on, on two di two um, following up albums. So yeah, like a yeah, we're really like a brotherhood right now, you know. And I think uh, I think yeah, one can see that, one can hear that, you know. It's like um yeah, we're like a family really. <laughs> no, it completely makes sense. And what's quite interesting as well, obviously, it's first in the release for a few years. But you sound incredibly confident in this release. I'll take it you're not particularly nervous about the reaction. And how have you found it so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is with us, is it's quite easy. Um, when we do recordings, when we write songs, everything, it, it's really on like a kind of um, instinctual, instinct motors. You know, mm. natural. I just, we, just, we just follow our guts. You know, what, uh, for what we think is good and what we like. Uh, we're quite sure that, well, usually, uh, overall, like the president likes it too. But for us, it's, of course, most important. What will the fans say about it? Yeah. But if, if we like it ourselves, yeah, then we know that the fans will like it as well, you know. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's really kind of really um, <laughs> give, an easy given fact to work with, uh, which doesn't say that it's easy to, you know, uh, to, to create all the songs because that process takes quite a while and it's it's taking longer uh, throughout the years it seems to me but um, <laughs> um yeah like you say we're, we're really confident about everything i mean when when we finished everything and, and also the mixing of the thing then i knew my okay reactions will probably be really good because yep. you just feel that you know you feel i would not i would not release an album if i would feel to myself like wait this is this is crap why the yeah. hell release it then you know that's that's it's no it's no point in doing that yeah and do you find yourself do you find yourself going out of out of your way to look at comments or reviews and stuff like that or do you just kind of ignore that side of things uh i'm not i'm not somebody that's, that's looking for comments mm. you know but I, what i do what i do i mean like talking to people that's where i get my impression of everything so yeah i mean of course for you it's easy to say uh oh martin great we do an interview fantastic album congratulations but mm. you know I, I don't know if you really mean that but of course oh of, of, but overall, the, the whole reactions of everybody I talk to, and that's from Brazil, Chile, U, UK, US, uh, Poland, Russia, whatever. Uh, yeah, everybody seems to like it really a lot. And uh, uh, I can tell if they're honest or not, you know. So that's yeah. the first impression that I get. And it's funny because I am the first one of the whole band um, as the main spokesman uh, to get all these impressions. So after that, after the, all these interviews and stuff that I started, the boys are just curious to know, like, okay, so, uh, you know, how are the first impressions, Martin? Can you tell us about that, you know? But <laughs> so then the parts of being a modern band, the whole social media, constantly being active online side of things, is that something you enjoy or is it kind of a necessary evil for you to do? For me personally, it's a necessary evil, mm. uh, and, and I'm a bit of an older man. But so so, um, but the lads, um, especially Husky and Alwyn, um, they they like doing that. So in in our switch, we separate tasks. So they yeah. go, we go, okay. If you guys seem to, you know, if you guys like that, okay, take it on. You know, yeah. do it. So 
yeah, especially Husky. He's doing really a shitload. Of, uh, he's if he's not behind his drum kit, he has his cell phone in his hands, you know, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but me, well, I don't even have internet on my cell phone because I don't want it. Because I've, um, yeah, I, I think I had internet when it when that whole stuff just started. Like, uh, what was it, beginning nineties or something? Mm-hmm. And um, so for me, it was really helpful to, to you know to do everything with email and then you know youtube started but now it's it's so overwhelming and it's so controlled that i go no i'm not going to waste my time all day you know with that i prefer to you know f- grab a good book and, and and enjoy myself with that instead of uh, being constantly online it's it, it will be too much you know no it's completely fair I completely get it but that's just my thing you know i mean <laughs> like I said, I'm not a kid of 18 anymore, you know. But I can understand that the kids enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. It's part and parcel of being in a band these days as well, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So finally, of course, live. It's, uh, it's it's not much to say in that front. How are you feeling about getting out? Hopefully, this year is it something you're kind of desperate to do? Get these songs played on stage? Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, I mean uh, it's basically go. Uh, if it wasn't if it, if it wasn't for these three shows that were, you know, still quite recent, you know, mm. I think uh, end October, beginning November. So it's you know what is it like maybe two months ago. So fortunately, that's still a little bit fresh. But I think I would have been, yeah, uh, yeah, you couldn't stand me. I think <laughs> if it would have taken like a like a you know really ten ten months or something because. Yeah, for me, like being on stage is essential. Uh, being yeah. in a metal band, it really is. That's also why um, we decided as a band to do that stream. Mm. Even, even to you know, even for us, it's weird, you know, because aspects actually we need an audience. But we we decided to do that because we just first of all we just want to play all the songs of this album live. Yeah, uh, and and meet each other, meet up as a band. Um, you know, why not go to a venue? And we knew the, the, the we know the people of the venue. We know they have a good camera crew. They been they did a couple of more stream shows and and um, as tryouts and stuff. And they enjoyed it. They liked it. They were honored. They wanted to do this. Okay, let's do it. And for us, we do, we're going to do it for free. Uh, so yeah, also also because you know, there's also people who have will not have the money to you know to to, to pay for it. Uh, of course, people can make a free donation if they want, but because we 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 do have a few things to cover with costs. But um, of course, uh, the idea behind it is that yeah, also uh, yeah, people who don't have that much can can see it. And for us, uh, yeah, to to enjoy being on a stage even with no audience, but you know, consider it as a as a professional way of of, of rehearsing, you know. And then we yeah. have the feeling as a band, like all right, you know, at least we had something, and maybe. Who knows how quick things go with uh, with all the vaccinations worldwide, mm. and who knows maybe you know in the beginning of uh, or the end of uh, spring or beginning summer, um, yeah, we can have like well maybe some kind of similar Corona shows that we did before, or maybe even normal ones. I don't think it will happen in like clubs packed, mm. but who knows you know maybe like festivals where people can actually yeah maintain distance, yeah uh, you know like that whatever we have to improvise anyway because it's not easy for bands but it's also not easy for promoters and the whole business that's 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 involved with it sound people crew nightliners uh pa rental companies it's it's so wide and uh, everybody's suffering you know absolutely yeah. and on that front martin thank you very much for your time really appreciate it thank you carl it was um uh, yeah enjoyable and uh, yeah especially get carried very very well soon huh Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?